All right. Well, I know something that's probably a yes way for you. Let's transition on to Article 2. We're going to be looking at the airspeeder. Um, I just want to preface this by saying that I know we're both very excited about the progress that these, this team is making, so we're definitely going to be biased. Feel free to, you know, sift through what we're saying and find the bits of tech that are really important and hang on to those. I'm going to get into it. All right, so Airspeeder coming out of a company named Alada. The idea is to create a competition for electric uh, vehicle takeoff and landing vehicles. They believe that that form of transportation is going to be the future, and they want to demonstrate the tech in a racing uh, environment. Why are they starting with racing? Like, to me, that sounds kind of counterintuitive. We've got companies like Nissan, Chevy, Tesla that kind of pioneered commercializing electric vehicles for everyone. They didn't start by making a Formula E racing league. So why is Airspeeder saying, you know, we're making this new type of vehicle. You can basically sit in a car, but it flies. Why are they starting by making a racing league for it? It seems like a really ambitious approach. I see where you're coming from. But think about it like this. Like the EVs, there weren't like completely new modes of transportation. They were a change to what already existed. There's, there was already roads. There was already like laws on how to drive, things like that. But they just changed the powertrain. And even with the Nissan Leaf and the Tesla, back in the 1990s, I think, General Motors already made an electric vehicle. And I'm assuming okay. it went through like a set of regulation and whatnot. This is something that's completely new, right? Like a completely new mode of transportation. You're not just going like forward, back, left, right. You're also going up and down. There's no laws. There's nothing made for it. So it has to go, rightfully so, it has to go through a set of regulation to make sure that it's safe. Last airspace um, catastrophe that I can think of off the top of my head was the Boeing 737 and the issues it had with its uh, nose going up and down whenever people didn't want it to go up and down. So the last thing you want is hundreds of thousands of people driving vehicles and crashing into each other. So that's why. And within a racing realm, you're actually given more flexibility with development. So they think they can demonstrate this technology in the racing realm and then through that get more... Um, test points, and just a, a set of data to help them develop a commercially viable version of this vehicle. And I guess there's already kind of been a pattern of technology being adopted from racing. A lot of times, you know, auto companies will experiment with new tech in their Formula One Absolutely. teams, and then that'll trickle down to their commercial vehicles. So this Absolutely, approach, yeah. you know, it, it actually does really make sense. For sure. So let's just get into what they've been building. Um, Airspeeder, it, it's had multiple iterations, but the Mark III is the latest one. It is the first one that is actually the full size of what the final product is going to be. It will still be unmanned. Um, my understanding is all these iterations have been unmanned so far. It's okay. rocking a fully carbon body, but they did mention that the Mark IV, which will be the first manned version of it, will be equipped with a carbon monocoque instead. It's going to help reduce weight a little bit more. What's impressive about the Mark III is that it's got radar, it's got LiDAR, it's got computer vision system for collision avoidance. This is a big thing that they're talked about in their little conference. Whenever you're doing racing, obviously you really want to get close to each other, but still you want to have some sort of system that avoids colliding and making sure like a propeller isn't flying into your eye from another vehicle. So they're really like trying to fine tune that system right now. Well. I just think of the complexity involved with like the ADAS self-driving collision avoidance systems that we see in our cars today. And then you got to think that cars for the most part are traveling in 2D. So like two cars next to each other, they can go forward and back and left to right, but they're in the same plane. They're not going right. up and down. You know, they're talking about these aircraft basically that travel in all three dimensions. So I can imagine the collision avoidance system is really complex and probably a brunt of the load for their software engineers. At this Absolutely. Point. You're completely right. Um, but let's get into batteries because these are battery powered. What I thought was really cool is that they were talking about pit stops. Obviously in F1, you have pit stops. You want to refuel, change out your tires, whatnot. The equivalent for it here would be to swap out batteries. And an issue they had with earlier iterations was that it would take about 20 minutes to unplug and totally shut off. But with the Mark III, the engineers have developed like this modular system where you can take a battery, plop it down and just connect it to the base, the chassis, and you're good to go. What's cool about this, I'm not totally sure how the race is going to be formatted, but if you have um, a portion that's about agility and, you know, doing these insane tricks or whatnot, you could quickly do a pit stop, swap out your configuration so that you have like a lighter road that load that's delivering the same amount of performance, do the thing, come mm -hmm. back, and if the next bit of the race is like an endurance portion, load up on batteries and then you're good to go. 
well, I mean, this sounds incredible to me because, like, I think about the different types of races that cars go through. Um, even in F1, like, depending on the course, they'll change some of the equipment on the drivetrain. They'll change what tires are being used. So you're saying, like, the main uh, criteria here is just the battery, and they're able to swap this in a few seconds, which Absolutely. is really incredible. Yeah, and, you know, to kind of finish this off, the battery pack they have delivers 500 kilowatts of power, which is the same as a Porsche Taycan. And the Porsche weighs 2.3 tons, and this vehicle weighs, weighs 120 kilograms, which is, I think, the weight of us combined. So, a lot of power. Yeah, like, I can imagine the battery probably being uh, one of the heaviest parts of both the Porsche and the Airspeeder. And the fact that they've been able to cut down so much weight uh, is probably really a testament to their prowess in aerospace design, where every single gram of mass reduction is incredibly important to the efficiency of the vehicle kudos to the team you guys are killing it 